Alright, I'm just going to get my first impressions of every Opus 9 card. Hopefully it'll be as quick as possible. I know it's going to be the entire set, but I'm going to go anyway. Irvine, I've already talked about this in the video. The card actually sucks though. I mean, it has the uses I talked about are basically all it has, but that's not really enough. It's just this card is outdated. There are better cards in other colors that they never saw play anyway, like Sid Rain's and Ice, but yeah, not much to say there. Ifrida, I don't like it because the condition is too hard to meet, and outside of the condition, sure, 3 for 7k is like whatever, but Brynhild is an EX, and that's the main reason that card was playable, I guess. Um, and like, yes, yeah, this is good if you can get it up to the level, especially if you can kill a monster as well as kill something of theirs, but. Um, without the we're having to play a bunch of efforts, efforts all suck, and yeah, it's just not, probably not going to happen in a real game. Ace, uh, super high roll, um, Archetype support. Now, that's actually pretty good, uh, support, honestly. Unfortunately, it relies on all your cadets being good, and I don't think they will be good enough to have a constructive deck full of them, um, you know, enough to make that uh, effect reliable to hit two um, forwards because that's really what you need for it to be like actually good. One cost 8k. The EX is on the wrong effect. Um, I had made the mistake of quickly thinking, oh my god, an EX that can add two cards, that's insane, we haven't had that before, but I was wrong. The EX is I just ignored the first effect, um, and that is an uh, okay effect, but again, you have to run too many cadets. Uh, just kind of hoping for too much to go right when your deck is full of uh, average cards. The other ace, and this is the annoying part, right? Because this card is actually really good support as well. And this is maybe one of the one of the strongest two cost backups I've seen. The fact that it can deal 7k on a two cost backup is really, really good. But it has the same name. It's called Ace. For some reason, all the uh, cards have name clashes in uh, okay, that's I guess that's just not enough of them. So this card has exactly the wrong name. If you're going to make cadet deck, you'd be trying to high roll with the uh, Legend Ace probably. So you can't really fit this one in as well. Um, this shame this could have been good. King of Eblin, uh, looking at this relies on looking at the other one, I'll quickly mention it's basically like a 7k vanilla with the same restriction, but they can party attack into a 5k or something, whatever. Main point here is 5 for seven, five for 2 7ks is actually pretty good. Bringing out from deck means there's no price setup required, so it's not like Lena where you need a knight and break zone, it's not like knight when need, needing a bunch of backups as well. Uh, you can literally play this at any point, I have two forwards out, unless you've drawn all of your queens, obviously, and also queen by herself is pretty bad, but... um. I actually don't I think this card is pretty good. It actually has a decent, uh, decent base case. So I wouldn't discount it. It's one of the better fire cards has, <laughs> honestly. Uh, Queen of Evelyn here is the thing that goes with it. I already talked about it. Um, the main thing I want to point out is that they're not being able to attack. That is really annoying because it means you can't aggro with them early. But um, having another forward out means you can attack them with that one. And that's, you know, they're then having them, they will have to play forward to block you then. And then uh, these guys can attack. So I don't know. Maybe, all right, whatever. Gaius. Not a fan. I don't like the cards that can search, which I obviously go through. Um, but I don't think any of them are good enough. And it's four, effectively 4 for 8k is not very good anymore. Like, that's just not good enough. Its effect is too meh to be treated as anything other than a vanilla. So, not a fan. Cyan. Nothing else to say other than it's another Category 6 backup, 2 cost backup for uh, Fire Ice, so Lock is just going to be so easy to resolve now, and now that we have different named backups, which we'll see Shadow in a second as well, which I'll go to now. Nope, he's not next. See Shadow in a second, it's another 6 cost, so uh, Category 6, 2 cost backup. There will be no one of me name clash anymore, so you're best be able to resolve Lock anytime you want. Um, that's about it, I don't really care about the effect. Gijuk. Uh, one of the headhunters, so basically all the headhunters, uh, whatever by themselves, it's the by Gamnon that makes them all good, so I'll talk about it when I get to him. King, this is actually okay uh, support, I guess, for cadets, like it's possible as a cadet name to make your ace better, it's on colour, um, but nothing to write home about. Clap that. This one pains me, and it's just another example of fire, they just really hate fire for whatever reason, I'll just say that they absolutely hate it. Like, you look at this one compared to the other equivalents in each element, so each, element has, each element has a 3 cost 7k standard unit like this, with some kind of either when it attacks, when it blocks, whatever. This one is so much worse than all the others, the fact that it does actually nothing, like literally blank, this may as well be a vanilla. Uh, just awful. Shadow, I was talking about that, just with Cyan, I mean its effect is actually kind of cute, maybe once every now and then, but who really cares? It's just there as Category 6 backup, another different name. Fusilier, again, fire gets shafted here. This is one of the worst ones out of this line of backups, so a bunch of the others, again, they have abilities which add something back, they gain their CP back, so they either 2 cost or 1 cost, they're basically evokers, um, but this one is not, and it's actually, VV is an EX, which does 5k without paying the extra. Um, yeah, just, they really hate fire, man. Nail, I've talked about this before, it's awful. This card actually sucks like in Constructed, it's probably no reason to ever play it. The only way it's ever going to be decent is if it's Star Civil, but that's there's way better things you can bring in on Star Civil. Um, this effects just suck, like, it, it's really not good. Uh, Hume, whatever, nothing to say here, it's just a piece of crap standard unit. 
Bygy, this is actually probably the best one to bring out naked off of um, uh, by Gamelin if you don't have any other headhunters. So that as just a play without a headhunter deck could be maybe okay. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'll talk about it again when I get to by Gamelin. But Bellius, just Bellius, but it's one cost now. Actually pretty good though because the haste is normally you didn't want it uh, before that point. Like normally it only is for the haste when you're going for game anyway, uh, except in decks that rely on giving haste to Zidane. Um, but whatever. Actually, all right. Don't mind this card, actually. Bergen, don't think it's good enough. Um, historically, none of these cards that rely that need backups to be played have seen play. Like, Astinian hasn't really. Uh, let's see, Nimbus never did. Uh, Bergen's very similar to him. It's a 3 for 8k, um, so it's a bit above curve, but having to have 3 backups out to play it. And its effect is actually not very good, because it's unlike Squall. It can only deal damage to the card that is fighting it, for some reason. Doesn't target something else. Its other ability is just whatever, maybe makes you pay a little bit extra to like finish things off if it's not quite enough, but don't think this card's good enough. Like, it's decent, but it's not going to make fire any better. Bomb, it's blank basically, it's just another, it's like a goblin, it's like a 2 cost, zero, uh, you know, pay 0, make it 5k, so during your turn, but you have to make it a 5k. Um, it just doesn't do anything. Ret Retartin, uh... Alright, maybe, like, like Gaius is obviously intended to be played with Gaius, maybe that's an okay two-card engine, except maybe it's not, because Gaius is too expensive. Um, the Magic Missile is a really weird special, it's like, I guess it's okay, but probably yeah, nothing to make you want to play this card. Two for seven Brave is very borderline, but still really pretty much too vanilla, I pretty much want to be uh, getting an 8k at this point if I, if I have a vanilla, um, for anything two or more. Uh, Varus. Really interesting, actually. <laughs> this came out of nowhere. Um, a search for any card that's actually um, not over-costed, like Thornton. Obviously, it's very situational, but there are decks that can resolve this. Like, you got Leo. Um, you can have uh, all the new Moogles that um, let you pay different CP as well as their own, make this a lot easier to resolve as well. There's actually probably a few ways you can do this, and its um, action ability is fairly decent. Um, just a nice, you know, recursion. It's very similar to Miner. I mean, decent. But yeah, the enterability pretty cool. They <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It again, it, it's a five for nine k that doesn't have any protection and doesn't do anything when it enters. So people are, oh, that's not whatever. But that is a problem because five k's are really easy to kill really efficiently, which is a problem. And the, yeah, they yeah, w there are no five costs without protection or good enterability that have seen play for the past. I don't even know how long. Like, it's a cool effect. Like, actually, kind of interesting. But the fact that he doesn't really do anything for a while is probably most comparable to something like Varn, but you can't give it haste to make it good. So, probably not going to see play, but kind of interesting, honestly. Quistus, uh, is this category eight sport? Yes, it is. I haven't even looked at this one properly yet. So, I haven't really evaluated all the category eight support together yet, so I can't really um, say for certain how it's going to be. But this is decent support. You know, if you have enough category eight forwards, that's a two cost 7k. Search EX search though, the fact is EX is relevant, buffs your other guys, and its special is really interesting. Uh, good with Yule, so you can have Yule if you just happen to see the right cost, and a lot of costs are shared along decks, so you know, it's de de yeah, a decent chance you'll see like a 4 cost and be able to kill a 4 cost, or a 3 cost, and especially if you high roll and hit 2 at once, that's really cool. Could happen, uh, the fact that you get the card as well is really nice too, so it's basically like a, you're only paying 1, effectively. So I actually like that a little bit, but um... It will depend on how good the other 8 support is. Airborne Trooper. Random standard unit. Kind of cute, I guess. But, whatever. Zalira. Very, very good summon. Um, I mean... No, it, it's very good. The fact that it kills Ishtola. This is a really easy way to kill Ishtola. Which is something that almost no elements have. Um, and that uh, lets you push through um, bigger things. Uh, Ice maybe doesn't have that many, uh, except the other, I mean, the other Zalira is one, maybe, depending on the board, but with Shantoto, you know, Ice Earth, this can help you push Shantoto through on his dollar. Um, so it's actually a pretty cool card. Uh, I like, I mean, Ice doesn't really deserve this, but they get it anyway, so good spot removal. Does kill, I mean, it's kind of like Diablos as well, where it basically invalidates 5Ks. Uh, it all signed on a backup. It's the same card, but it's a backup now. Still EX for some reason. Uh, I don't really know, like, you probably rather the forward. Um, it's kind of maybe some redundancy if for some reason you want to play both, but um, I think if you chose between them, you'd probably rather the forward, just because them being a zero card and losing a forward, having a 9k is a much better thing to position to be in than to have an extra backup.
in that situation because it really lets you push them hard. This is this is the better of the category eight forwards from what I remember it's support in this set. So this is actually decent and makes Quistus better. Um, the Renoa it does make better as well, but I don't know if I, I like the Renoa that much, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but yeah, choosing a character when it enters is kind of funny. I uh, don't know how relevant that actually would be, but um, just the fact that it's cheap, so you can make it one cost, which is pretty solid. As your dragon, let's see, saw you the ice legend. Um, very interesting. Uh, being EX is cool, I guess. Um, the fact that it pushes you to actually play mono ice instead of splashing earth for Shantoto is interesting. Uh, its effects are interesting. Um, it can freeze a bunch of backups, and being able to kill a forward for three cards in hand. I mean, I've always talked about these like. Discarding three is basically like playing a four cost summons. It's kind of like Odin. However, having to discard three cards, not being able to pay off backups at the point in the game when you can do that is generally uh, much worse than having to pay, like being able to pay as CP because you generally want to be holding cards or have enough cards in your hand to, um, you know, do stuff and have plays next turn. Having to discard three and be able to spend your CP later on is not that reliable. Uh, but still, this card is cool, the fact that it can keep adding cards every time it attacks, uh, plus having, you know, kind of universally useful effects that could uh, close out, especially the freeze, you can keep freezing things and kind of close out a game like that. So uh, it's alright, um, still, Ice has so many good cards at this point that, like, stuff like this might not have room anyway. Terra, <laughs> it's uh, Moomba support, <laughs> I like Moomba, so that's cool, kind of cool, but other than that, not much to say about this. Hurdy, uh, very interesting and probably better than the other Hurdies. Um, if you're going for Sarah with Moogles, this is actually, you know, it's like a, a one cost uh, backup basically, assuming you hit. If you don't, that's really annoying. Um, but the uh, second effect is actually pretty good. I don't know how many good F58 2 forwards there are in Ice though. Um, maybe you'd have to be playing this in, you know, a different element, like with Lightning, with Lua, or Wind has a bunch of them, I think. But uh, I don't know whether you would have room for it in those, but we'll see. Like I said, it's hard for me to say without looking at all the support at once. Hund legs. This is Ice's uh, monster during your turn, forward during your turn thing. Uh, kind of funny. I don't know. I don't really have much to say about these. They're just like funny. They're just dioramu, but eh, whatever. Mind Flayer, pretty awful. Um, not much to say. It's a, a draw one EX, but that's about it. Like dulling something is not worth losing a card over, really. Class 9th Moogle is really, really crazy, the stuff it enables. Um, I can't really even begin to talk about all the stuff that you can do with this. The fact that it's searchable by Sarah, and Sarah is also searchable, so you can get it really reliably. You can basically have a mono ice deck that can cast wind cards. Um, Ishtola is really good. Zidane is really good. Diablos is really good. All these really good generic wind cards can just suddenly fit into ice for no reason whatsoever. I don't know why ice of all elements gets to do that. Um... But yeah, definitely. And the fact that we have all these different named Moogles now means that you can actually probably have a mono ice deck with a Sarah that's activating five backups when it attacks, which is pretty nuts. Um, lots to do with that. And then here's just another different named two ghost Moogle backup in ice. So if it's going to see play, it'll be for Sarah in like an ice heavy Sarah deck. Uh, that's about it. Who really cares about the effect? I mean, it's kind of all right, I guess, but not really. Yuke, this is the ice standing unit of this, and it's like. Okay, you can't really force someone to block, so it's actually not very good. Um, as one of the standard units, it is alright, but nah, not one of the better ones. Ghost is really, really cool, actually. I, this card is actually very good, in my opinion. Um, of the ice cards, is one of the most interesting. Uh, it's basically like, it basically turns any card, any card in your hand into Agath uh, whenever you play a Category 6 forward. But having that available at all times is quite good. And its special is also quite good, even though it's kind of very situational... Being able to resolve it, you need a ghost in hand, a ghost come out, costs a bunch, whatever. But actually not bad, and because it puts the ghost, you know, you're, you, it's a special, so you're using the other ghost into your breakdown as well, so you're not losing the ghost ability to be able to use still, so you're not giving it up or anything like that. Um, so actually, very cool card, probably we'll see play. Um, Laguna, another card that Ice just doesn't need but gets for whatever reason, it's just a 3 cost AK generic search. It's like a sale, but it's on a forward now, uh, but it's category 8, so this is good generic kind of just neutral stuff you can play with category 8 to make your scroll cheaper trigger your other stuff renault or whatever else so actually pretty good and here's the renault i was talking about which i'm not that much a fan of but again it makes your squall cheaper and he is the one who gets all the effects so that's pretty all right you like a one cost ak dull freeze something is very very good the 1k first strike is who cares really um but being a 2 cost 5k herself is a bit bad so 
eh, you get the freeze when she enters, but maybe could be okay. The other support's way better. Lock. This is a really interesting effect, actually. I'm surprised we get this on a common in ice. Again, ice gets the interesting stuff here. And you can basically... Monsters and summons are the main thing to think about here. Like, you can effectively, you know, reliably search any mo any monster or any summon as long as you don't play other ones. Um, but that's pretty easy to do. And monsters especially, like, you can get a scale toad basically whenever you want. Um, you can get a flan. Uh, although, if you're playing the earth one, I guess you could end up with that, which would be worse. But, but yeah... Monster or a summon that you specifically want, you can play this and be able to get to it reliably, which is very interesting. New Mew. Uh, this is Ice's thing of these. Uh, it's okay. Um, you know, all of these being a two cost backup by themselves is good, and having the extra effect, uh, if you pay extra, the flexibility is what makes them playable. But this one, maybe the fact that it doesn't get gain you CP is a reason not to play it. It's And Ice does have quite a few other good backups now. So I don't know if this one will see play. It's, again, it's one of the worst ones because it doesn't give you CP like some of them do. Ariman, uh, probably, I don't know, maybe one of the better ones out of the uh, uh, monsters that turn into falls in your turn permanently. But um, not permanently, you know what I mean. Yeah, whatever. Maybe if Diablos gets banned or something. No, I, I don't know. Not a, Not that big a deal. Adele, actually really cool. Um, I know people have compared it to the other Adele and talked about, oh, you know, I'd rather the other Adele because bloody blah, blah, whatever. But I honestly think that this being passive to make it unblockable, not having to pay as well, that's really good, actually. Like, this, once you get to five backups, this can probably be quite a pain. Um, and, you know, 9k, probably, uh, assuming you have some other FFTR 2 forward. That's pretty, that's pretty damn threatening. Like, the, three, the 5k Adele, you can, you know... If you're expecting it, you can have something to kill it with, you know, ready. But 9k is much harder to do that with. Killing that at instant speed is very difficult. Um, and even not, even just not instant speed. 9k is generally the point where forwards get harder to kill as it is. So, actually probably much more of a threat than the other one, I think, honestly. Uh, I reckon this is, yeah, probably just an upgrade most of the time. Vaan. <laughs> This would be pretty cool if there was, like, any Sky Pirates in the entire game that weren't called Vaan. Uh, he's got the worst possible name for this. Um, the only other Sky Pirates are Balthia and... I can't even remember. There's one other better. Oh, it's blah, that, that crappy guy, the five-cost one. But, um... Or four-cost, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, basically there's not enough Sky Pirate names for this. Uh, title's kind of cool, though. Viera wins version of this. Uh, again, not really good enough, in my opinion. Uh, Archer... Did a very similar thing as a two cost, as actually a two cost, and has another effect. So, not not very good. Edge, uh, back attack, but with the Titus drawback, and it's probably worse than Titus. So, probably not good enough. How it, okay, to be fair, it is in wind, which is the element that can have backups up during your opponent's turn much easier. Um, especially something like Layak, but you know, you've also got like Aerith dying or stuff like that. So, actually, I guess it's too harsh to compare it to Titus because he is in the element that does make use of being out of. Spend, spend backups during your opponent's turn quite easily. And his effect's maybe not quite strong enough, though. Uh, the 4k could be okay, depending on what else happened that turn. But, yeah, I'm on the fence about this one. The Shemhazai. Uh, fortunately, of these summons, uh, Wind maybe got one of the not-as-good ones. But that's maybe only because they already have good enough summons. Um, returning a 3-cost backup, good against combat trick. Uh, good against um, the, the buffs as a combat trick. Uh, activate all forwards is decent, I guess. It's just a bad fairy kind of that point. And obviously the breaking of monster is the, the dream. Like, that's really good if that goes off. But we could already do that with Alexander. So, and that's an EX as well. So, yeah, yeah probably won't see play. Sylph, kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> again, it's probably not space for this kind of stuff. It's actually pretty cute. Like, it's not even that bad. But it's probably just not space for this kind of stuff at this point. Seven. It's got probably got the wrong name. Seven is one of the better... Uh, cadet forwards. Um, really weird. Actually hard to evaluate card. Uh, backups with back attack. Uh, like a three cost. So it's not like card where you can play it on your opponent's turn one and kind of play a three cost on your own turn one. Um, and the 2,000 damage is maybe not enough for it to be worth. I don't know. Really weird card. Selkie. Uh, Wind gets the good one or one of the good ones out of these forwards. Um, and the fact that it's standard unit and Wind has the good standard unit support. So this one is probably the best out of them, just because not only is this effect a plus one, which is the good one, it also works with all the support. Like, Ark is in this element, and Warrior of Light is in this element, and those are two of the best standard unit supports, and they've got all these other good standard units too, like Chocobo Knight and stuff. This can really let you, you know, turbo through that. So, 
actually probably, and the fact you give it haste with the chocobo that gives haste, so this one is probably far better than all the others. Of course, Wind gets that. Whatever. Uh, chocobo, the first four cost chocobo. That is relevant, trust me. I know this card doesn't look very good, but the fact that it is a four cost chocobo, which means it's full value of chocobo knight, it's full value off of, uh, I believe, fat chocobo. Don't quote me on that, I'll have to check that up quickly. Um, I guess effect is not that great, but it will usually be 8k because of arc. Um, pretty good. Fat Chocobo, the new Fat Chocobo. This could have used with a couple more uh, new Chocobos besides just the one, but still a pretty good high roll card. And you can bring it in off Chocobo Knight. You can, uh, like I said before, with um, his four cost. And yeah, it, it's very high rolly, but decent high roll. Um, so actually pretty good, and I don't think that uh, 5 cost Fat Chocobo is as important in Chocobo decks as people make it out to be. I think Warrior of Light is more important at this point, but yeah, pretty good card, good high roll, could, uh, it could be good for that deck. Juice, this is actually decent support for Cadets, I don't hate this card at all, I actually quite like it. Uh, 2k buff for all the others, obviously it's weak itself, which is kind of annoying, but as a way to pad out your Cadet names, pretty decent. This spell here, weird twist on Amaranth. Uh, not being EX is probably the killer there. Um, dealing 7k, uh, being 8k is much better than being 7k, but only dealing 7k still, probably not enough to justify it. I mean, killing a 2 or less cost monster on a 5 cost 8k is actually pretty good, so if you're against monsters, that is very good. Uh, and the choose 4 deal 4 health damage is just whatever. So, yeah, I mean, um, killing monsters is good, otherwise, average. Penelo, um, she's a dancer, not a sky pirate. Uh, she searches for a Sky Pirate, but uh, I guess you can search for Balthia, which you can search for Fran. And you've got kind of an interesting search chain there. Four cost is probably too much. Probably need to be three cost. Um, yeah. Fran. Now, this card is actually very interesting because it costs one if you have Balthia, and there's a Balthia that searches it. Um, that's actually pretty good. It's the Sky Pirate backup, which means the Ash that uh, draws a card if you control a Sky Pirate could be very reliable as well. That could be an interesting, weird kind of Water Wind deck. Probably not, but I like that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, the fact that Balthia Search is a 1 cost backup now, that's pretty good. It's effect on entry, not bad for a 2 cost. Uh, it's effect on break is also not, not bad for 2 cost, actually. There's probably a few things you can kill with that, which could be, uh, you know, quite timely. The Major Sisters, very good card, actually. Uh, it's kind of like Vanille for Wind, which is, I don't know why, Wind gets that. Uh, for some reason it's an EX as well, and it's any card. So, not only is it kind of like Vanille for Wind, obviously less lives, but you don't need to play a bunch of stones. It does support other weird strategies. Like, you know, just dumping stuff for whatever. I can't go through every single card that benefits from cards being a break zone, but it is the first time we have an effect that does that. And that's kind of interesting. Although most of the time you'll only be doing it if you've already drawn another Mage Sisters, because otherwise you want to be fueling itself for its revive. Yasmat. Really good. Probably, maybe. Uh, so, it's weird this is EX. This is a very good EX, and that's probably what makes it playable, if it's playable, um, or good even. Uh, it is good. Uh, it is the highest cost um, non-light or dark forward. So it's the it's the biggest thing to bring out with Luna Freya or Lena, uh, which are the ways to bring out, you know, massive things that aren't light or dark. Uh, you know, on entry and triggering May Phase 1 is good. If you kill a 5 cost when it enters, that's pretty good. If you pay 4 for it with the activated characters, that's alright, maybe, as a base case, um, depending if it's likely to live or not. Uh, so, actually a pretty good card, honestly. Again, I don't know why Wind gets the interesting stuff. Wind and Ice, the card that Elements already have way so, like, so many uh, relevant cards. Um, Luso, I think, obviously, this card reads, if you control Yuri, does all this stuff. I think it's better than people are giving it credit for. I think people are generally maybe thinking it's not good, but it actually probably is. Um, quite a threat. Uh, the fact that it does the damage without even hitting your opponent, that's pretty cool. Um, I I just think I think it's better than people are giving it credit for as like a threat a finisher um, combined with Yuri obviously and I mean there's also the goal base thing and the goal base is better now because there is a way to search it now um, but yeah we'll see if it will be good enough for comp competition but definitely something I'm keeping an eye on I love this card because this is another hope, a way better hope, and that makes looping way easier and way more reliable. So don't get me started on all that. I could probably talk about that in a different video. But yeah, this is just basically a way better hope for all that kind of stuff because um, it's much harder to kill. You know, it doesn't rely on you having Alexander's new deck to play efficiently. Um, and it activates itself at the end of the turn as well. So you get even more resolutions of it. So yeah, really, really cool card. Good redundancy, good reliability for loopy stuff. 
Love it. I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. This ram. I mean, there ram, there's too many rams. This ram won't see play because the other two rams are better. The forward that um, searches anything and the backup that adds anything back, which is an EX. So this one won't see play. Heretic Knight Garland. Very interesting effect. Um, interesting cost reduction even. Uh, two cost AK when your opponent, uh, one of the things, opponent's things died is pretty good. Honestly, like AK, like I said before, is where I'd kind of want to be for like a vanilla. Um, the effect being able to trigger it twice to clear opponent's ward is cool, I guess. I mean, 12 is a lot to pay, but I've done that with stuff like Avatar before, so that's, you know, maybe it's not too much to pay. And even without the, um, without paying it twice, uh, you can do stuff like Manus Bin Warmake. This with Manus Bin Warmake is actually pretty cool, because that's the same cost as Bergen was before, but Ber this is way, way, way better than Bergen, not like a piece of crap like Bergen is. Uh, that, that's just like the kind of stuff I like. Probably not actually competitive. This Vincent, really cool. Probably this is, you know, the logical uh, improvement on Deleter. So, you know, three cost 9k is not good enough anymore to justify the drawback of breaking something. Obviously, you want to use the drawback to benefit yourself in some way, but, you know, vanilla 9k is not worth that, whereas this Vincent being able to kill something probably is worth that. Unfortunately, they can respond after you break your backup, which is annoying if they're going to activate it or something like that. Uh, but, you know, if it goes off, pretty decent um, sacrifice for a backup if you've got stuff, synergies you're doing with sacrificing backups. Uh, the uh, the um, special is actually good. Like, that's a good special, honestly. Breaking a three cost backup you know, being able to do that more than once, and there's a lot of instances, so you can actually do that quite easily. That's pretty solid, and I actually think that's decent and probably makes this card more playable um, than it would have been if it was just the Enter, and I like it. Gabranth, this. Now, this card creates so much space in deck building. I can't begin to describe the amount of stuff you can do more reliably if you can search five costs or higher reliably. There are so many of them. Golbez is the big one, obviously, but there's heaps more. I can't even go through all of them. But basically, any deck that was uh, was good because of a five cost and you needed a certain five or five or higher forward to uh, you know make that it do what it wanted, you can now do that reliably thanks to this card if you're in Earth. Um, but uh, I mean, like very ex. I don't know why it's ex. Like it, that's pretty damn good. And you know, two for five, not that bad. Being able to search crazy stuff like Golbez. But also on a, uh, on the the Brave plus 3k. So a 2 cost 8k Brave when you're a 6 or more. Obviously it's not going to happen that often. But that is solid. And the special is also very solid. It's kind of like dark. Sort of. Um, it like it will kill things. You can definitely kill things with it. So this card, very good. I think people... If people are thinking this card is average, they maybe aren't thinking about the, the ceiling it has. And the kind of stuff it can do. Gareth... Random standing unit, whatever draft, I guess. Golem, fucking, uh, whatever. Core, uh, whatever, basically. But it is 15 category, uh, category 15 padding for the two cost Noctis. So now we probably have enough category 15 characters that two cost Noctis will be much more reliable. So that will, that's the reason you'll play it if you're going to play it. Sidgar Lond, <laughs> uh, can add himself back, which is funny, but uh, it's just a randy four cost, two cost back up in Earth. Not EX. So, um, that's a lot worse than it could have been. Um, but it does, you know, let you dig for Earth characters, just like Marsh let you dig for Fire characters. Uh, so, not bad, actually. Decent, for sure. Getting a category of character out of your break scene, get minor and stuff like that is kind of interesting, I guess, but uh, probably you want to get a forward later on. Mist Dragon. People hyping this card a lot. I don't think it's worth the hype. Yes, it's fine. Yes, I consider playing it in some decks. Maybe depending on what other decks are good, but I really don't think it's as good as people think it is. Um, people are like, oh, it completely counters Layla, or completely counters Lena, whatever. It doesn't really, like, it basically just transfers the advantage they get into somewhere else. Because, you know, this costs CP, like, this is not free. You have to pay three, probably four most of the time, because almost every use case is during your opponent's turn with this. So, unless you're leaving CP up, which is another problem entirely, you're probably paying four for it every time. Um, and that means. The remove from all the cards breaks on effect is basically discard two cards to do that. So your opponent's Layla is turning into discard two cards. Your opponent's Lena is turning into discard two cards. Obviously, if you can, if that also prevents later resolutions of their Lena and Layla, then it gets better. But you're still down CP doing that, and you know they can still have Knight or Viking and draw more of them and discard them and then you know refuel. Uh, so I don't think it's as good in that case as people seem to think it is. Still all right though. I'm not saying it's bad. Uh, the negating Diablos is pretty cool. Uh, but again, you most of the time you're probably playing four for that. So you're basically only gaining one CP. So really the value in it will be what you're protecting with it and what you're enabling by preventing Diablos from resolving. Phoenix is probably the best thing to uh, cancel with it, obviously. Um, 
But yeah, the that's like, yeah, that's about the extent of it. The second effect is just a bad Titan. I mean, Titan at two cost is, if it was playable, is very passable. Three cost Titan would be awful, and it's not even quite Titan. It doesn't protect it from other break effects, so only damage. So yeah, that effect is basically meh. Uh, no good base case really for this card. It's just specific things it hits. Maybe that's good enough, maybe that's not, but I don't think it's crazy good like everyone seems to think it is. Uh, Ton Betty. Ton Berry, sorry. It's, it's not called Ton Berry, so you can't search it with Ton Betty. Uh, it's just... It's not even a job, Ton Berry. Uh, it, yeah, I don't know. It's probably one of the... Maybe one of the better ones out of these, but I don't... Maybe it's not actually, now I think about it. I don't know. It pings off something when it dies, potentially, but... Eh. Now, this is by Gavin. This is the Headhunter support. This is actually good support for, a, like, a job deck, and they, they have effects that want to have lots of Headhunters, and this is a really good way to bring them out, and it's perfect cost for Tama, so... They're actually maybe a headhunter deck or at least a headhunter engine with Tama could be good. I don't know. Um, I like it though. I honestly like it. I'm not an unfan at all. And they do have the synergy with the, the one that doubles the damage and the one that does AOE when you have four or more. Um, it's probably never going to resolve and it's probably a dreamland type thing. But even just as you know, this guy bring up the two ghosts which buffs when they attack. Eh, pretty cool. Banger. Uh, this is one of the better ones of these for sure. Adding a character back, that's really good because now, you know, again, it's like an evoker. So this is basically just another evoker for Earth, but gives you the flexibility, which is very, very good. Uh, especially evoker's general weakness is that later on, the 1 CP is you'd rather probably discard, uh, so pay 3 CP in backups to be able to do it. So like this card a lot. Bagan, really weird, really hard to evaluate. I'm tempted to say it's not very good at all. Uh, I like, some people seem to think it's quite good, but I don't really see it. Um, yeah, not being able to be pinged is good, uh, so that's alright, but it's only a 7k, vanilla 7k basically. Um, it's There's almost no situation it's going to be dealt that 4,000 or more damage without dying, which means it can't use the effect. So, and then it's only does 7,000 as well. Really weird, I don't think there's any way to trigger it yourself either that's reliable. So, I mean, maybe there's some weird situation that's decent, but I'm not convinced. Uh, Choose Earth Forward, it's just another Moogle name, whatever. I don't really care about the effect. Tenth Moogle, Earth for Lightning. So of the three, we have um, Ice for Wind, Earth for Lightning, and Lightning for Water. For some reason, as usual, Fire gets completely shafted. There was that many combinations of elements they could have done, and Fire just happened to miss out for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, Earth for Lightning, decent. I'm not, I don't hate that. I can't think of, like, you know, Silence is the first thing that comes to mind, but you probably don't have room for... I mean, I guess if we played Miner before, this is probably a much better card than Miner in that case. Um, so maybe that's alright, but yeah. I mean, it goes well in my Earth Lightning Aggro deck, but um, I already have enough Lightning CP in that because it's, it's not uh, light, you know, it's very earth, uh, very Lightning heavy anyway. Uh, so yeah. Decent though. Th those, oh sorry, I should talk about these effects in general. These, being able to tap for two elements is a huge, huge, huge step up for dual decks. I maybe have not uh, stated that, overstated that enough, but um, that makes... Two color decks, way, way more reliable because one of the biggest drawbacks of two color decks is that if you don't see both color backups early, you are in an, a bad spot and it's some, often hard to come back from that because then you don't have the uh, room to play backups later on because you now you actually have to deal with the board and you can end up in a situation where you never actually get the CP you need reliably. So these are a huge deal because they let you play one backup and have both elements straight away and also they let you splash stuff they make tricolor decks way more reliable because dual, dual color decks are still playable, of course, and now you have dual color deck that can splash a third color without having to go into that color, so to speak. Um, so, you know, if you have an earth something deck that's not lightning, but then you have this backup, you can play it like normal, but then you can also play lightning cards randomly. So, yeah, decent. No, no more than decent. Very good, very good. Um, yeah, Yang. Okay, if there are better monks, this would be better. Uh, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of any good ones. Uh, so, I don't know if that's... All I can really say about this, I mean, you can have an Urshla on the food, I guess, and play this Yang and do the Urshla thing or something, but yeah, monks aren't very good. It would be good if there were good monks, though, honestly. Well, it would be decent if there were good monks. Lycasis, really cool card. Um, one of the earlier reveals that maybe people, makes people suspect this might be one of the reasons Dutterloon was banned, because this makes Cactuar super reliable, you can search them really easily and get them back, whatever, blah, blah. So, Monster Dex, this is really great support for Monster Dex. Um, that's that's basically it, really. Um, you know, Monster Dex being Earth is pretty good, but yeah. Legend Rydia, okay, really high roll card again. So there's a few cards in this set that are kind of like 
not really reliable, but if they go off, they're crazy value. Uh, Ultimation's another one, which we'll see. But, um, yeah, this is... I mean, seven cards... Oh, so it's five cards. Five cards is an amount to look at. Um, generally, reveal five effects. You need, like, 15 or something to, uh, things for it to hit to make it, you know, reliable enough. Um, and showing a 4K is, like really weak for a five cost if this whips it is absolutely awful um way like even worse than something like kelga but yeah it if it goes off though pretty crazy hit a phoenix hit a raiden you know there are some pretty high roll stuff the other if this the action ability really weird it reminds me of yuna's ability in like a different way so you know you're basically getting a 2 CP discount on the card, but in this way it's flipped the other way, so in Yuna's case it's because you're paying, you know, I can't really explaining, but yeah. Really weird card, really high rolly, gonna be hard to get on the field if you don't guarantee that effect goes off, and I don't think there's any way to stack expensive summons at this point. Uh, you probably need to be in do using Yule or something like that, I don't know, but yeah, really, really, really interesting. Rinok, uh, this is the one that combos with the other one. I don't know if we've, have I seen the other one yet? I don't think so, I think it might be Earth. Oh, uh, okay, whatever. Anyway, there's one that does 5,000 when you have four more headhunters. I think it's when it enters, maybe. So, this one makes it 10,000. That's basically its use. Other than that, it's whatever. Lilty. Uh, the Earth's version of these standard units. This one's pretty good. Uh, good blocker. I mean, like, you put this down early against aggro, and they are not going to want to attack into it, because you just get cards for free. Uh, but, that being said, it's vanilla. You can't force someone to attack into you. And uh, 7k is, like, not good for vanilla, so... Yeah, of these is one of the better ones, but probably still not that good. Regis, Searcher for 15, great. Just Searcher. That's the kind of stuff you need for these uh, for these kind of decks. And that'll make, not again, another 15 name, a really good 15 name for the Noctis. So, good, good, good card. Good for Noctis combo decks too, the Legend Noctis as well. Um, If you have, like, you know, damage stuff with that. I have decks like that. Azul. I don't know, whatever. It's like a... <laughs> it's like that paladin I think it is is like some some standard unit that does basically the same thing and it's not seen any place so this probably isn't going to either it's Sviet's low which is like such a restrictor I don't know Edia unfortunately this wants to be in mono and in mono you probably want the legend Edia uh, that's all I really have to say about it it being EX is cool but you're probably going to play the other, other legend Edia if you're going into a lot of mono lightning like that Odin, weird card. Honestly, I'd probably rather play Ramu, the one cost Ramu that can also kill a monster instead of this, if I was going to play one of them. Um, Kane, really cool support, really cool way to uh, break your own lightning backups. Finally, I mean, they release a card called Argi, which is supposed to synergize with getting uh, rid of backups, but then they, every card they release after that doesn't actually break the backup, it removes it. So finally, they're releasing actual support that interacts with uh, stuff like Argi. And for Sawyer as well, obviously we know all the stuff interacts with Lily, interacts with this, so it gives you redundancy for playing a deck like that. If you don't see the Lily, you also have this to do those effects. So that's good, and it's a really good effect as well. So you're basically paying four for an AK that does uh, neg AK power on something when it enters. That's really, really good. So, you know, obviously having to break it back up is not really, really good all the time, but as a, you know, for the drawback, that is a good um, advantage to get. So that is worth the price you pay. So they are getting better at kind of valuing breaking your own backups. City of Clan Gully. Very interesting. Um, it's probably got the wrong name, because uh, the searcher is obviously also City of Clan Gully, but uh, being able to break an active forward for uh, 4 CP, basically a 2 cost summon effectively, turning your category active 2 forward into a 2 cost summon that says break opponents forward, but also you lose City of Clan Gully. Decent, good to have the flexibility being on a 2 cost backup. Um, that's about it, really. Goblin, this is probably the best of the um, uh, monsters that turn into forwards during your turn. Um, it's just decent, honestly. Mira, Mira loves this, by the way. This is like a crazy good card for Mira. Um, and the fact that it's called Goblin as well is even better for Mira because there's a lot of goblins. But uh, yeah, cool. It's probably one of the best ones of those. Golbez, uh, kind of like Zemis, uh, sort of, um, but more high rolly and better with haste. And that's actually relevant. If you bring this in, give a haste, play some big ass big forward from your deck, top of your deck. That's really cool. You got Yule to look at it. Like I said before, there's <laughs> there's the you look and kind of stack it and then maybe you draw a card so it's something like stick a card down and stuff and uh, that, that's that's a bit weird ignore I said that but yeah basically you're looking at top of your deck with you all and you find a good forward play this give it haste bring out that forward for pretty cheap double meteor is a really funny special actually it's pretty pretty cool honestly like it's just decent removal to add on to the thing but you're not going to be using it unless you're using the other ability so yeah cypher yeah, I, what a, I mean the backup which is Eddie which is four cost so it's just a 2 cost AK at that point, but you have to play an expensive backup. Yeah, probably not worth. 
Seek. Really weird card. Uh, I don't know if Odin needed to be a backup and not being EX is... I mean, Odin, the only reason Odin's playable is because it's EX. So you're never going to hardcast it. Uh, so this card's like... Oh, sorry. This card is Necromancer. This is the best target for Necromancer. Probably the first, like, decent target for Necromancer. That's basically all it is. Other than that, it's whatever. Sage. Uh, another of the good um, uh, backups that do this. Uh, the extra pay. Because adding a summon, again, you're getting two CP back. So it's basically like an evoker. But you can sink more backups into it. It's a good card. Nero. Uh, one of the really interesting effects, actually. That's second auto ability. When it's added back, do it thousand to something. Very interesting. Um, you know, Lulu, break for Sawyer. Add this back. Does 7k to something. Um, and I, I don't know how relevant that'll be. It's like just kind of interesting, weird, kind of funny thing. Now, the other effect is just like a, a guy that attacks the Tony Hunters, like a Stinian and stuff, whatever. That's eh, not a big deal. Bagnemi. Uh, this one is not... You can't bring this out with Bargamnon. Oh, wait, it's not even a Headhunter anyway. So, yeah, who cares? Um, no, this is uh, Lightning's version of these standard unit things. And uh, it's not very good. Yeah, like the fun. It's funny that you can play multiple of them and they like all trigger each other, so you can just dull like a million things. But there are lots of cards that already dull a million things, like Snow, for example. So that's not good enough by itself usually. Bahama Zero, interesting. Um, it's six cost. That's relevant for some reason. I can't remember why. I think there's a effect that pays a six or less. Uh, pl plays a six or less summon. Uh, I don't know. Type Zero. You can search it with Vermilion Bird. Let's see. I think, but. Yeah, whatever. The Sawyer Legend. Um, really cool, actually. Very, very cool, even. It's a, a three cost 6k, uh, but it adds, you know, you're getting two cards, and the fact that you probably maybe kill something with it, that's really cool. Obviously, if you low roll it, it's an unfortunate, but the average result of this is usually going to be pretty good. Like, you know, a three and a four, that's 7k. Uh, Sid Previ is a six cost, and he'll probably play a lot of three costs as well, so. There's probably some decent rolls. You can hit with this Eddie is six cost as well. Uh, it, it's pretty cool, honestly. I actually quite like this card. Um, and the fact that you can cast any summons, I mean, that might be relevant. Maybe there's off-color summons you want to play with it. Um, weird summon deck, maybe. I don't know. Pretty cool. Hard to really evaluate. Maya, I think, is really bad for a legend. I don't even know why this is a legend. Like, people are like, oh, it's wall for lightning. No, it's not. These effects are nothing like walls. There's, walls are way better. And he selects two of them as well. Like, the fact that it's a... Uh, you can only select two of these if you're on five or more damage. They could have taken away that restriction and just said you can select two and it still probably wouldn't be very good, I don't think. So, not really a fan of this. Its effects just don't do anything, really. Uh, another one of these, or whatever. This one, though, so lightning can produce water. I, I, I can't think of any specific stuff off the top of my head that makes that good. But again, if there's a lightning water deck, this is really good. So... I already talked about how good, uh, you know, being able to pay two elements of one backup is. I'm going to go through it again. Reeve. This is a, a three-cost EX Searcher. So, they're really good. Vincent. I was talking about the other Vincent before. He's probably pretty good. So, this card actually might be good. Uh, K-Sith is maybe not so good at the moment. I mean, if we eventually get a good K-Sith, then maybe it becomes a lot better. But, yeah. Good card. Just the three-cost EX Searcher. not much else to say. Livia. Kind of sucks. Like, <laughs> even if you bring it in, it still kind of sucks. It doesn't really do anything. Um... Yeah, I don't really care about it. It's so whatever. Ravis, crappy Amon, crappy Emperor, whatever. Like, we have a million of these effects already, and most of them are better than this one. Adol, very weird card. Uh, it's a, Again, it's a 5 cost that doesn't do anything on entering. doesn't have a protection effect. It is 10k, though, usually, and it does... Do, again, like, Varn is probably the best equivalent. You know, something that has to attack to trigger... Um, and it's all right. It's decent uh, effect for that. But probably, again, the fact that it's a witch, you can bring it out with the Eddie back up. This is one of the better things to bring out with that. That's kind of funny. But, I don't know. Probably not worth. Ultimatia. High roll card again. Uh, I don't know. Like, you just can't really... I can't really evaluate cards like this because they are just either really good or really bad depending what happens. And you can't... You don't really have control over that. You can't really stack your opponent's deck in any way. You can't really stack your deck in many ways at all for characters except look at stuff with Yule. So... I can't really talk about that. Aedalus, not very good in my opinion. Honestly, people were happy when they saw it. They're like, oh, it's really cool and stuff. It's like Devout for summons, but I don't think that's good. Um, Devout being able to bring out forwards is what makes it good. <laughs> uh, no, I just don't think this card is good. It's too much to pay for a, um, a backup, uh, you know, in the initial investment. Um, I'd much rather play a Devout if I was going to spend that much on something that I have to kind of get the investment back later because the forward is much better than casting a summon. Ultros. 
Legend. I'm, I was surprised when I was listening to Legend. I thought it was maybe more of a hero because it's basically like the Emperor from Opus One, but you have to pay for it. But of course, it's not dark, and it's in the element that can put stuff back into its deck with stuff like Artemision. Uh, so decent. Um, and the, the on attack effect can go really well with stuff like Nickel and Kevnazo, so that's probably a, a benefit for this one. In fact, they have to pay to bring out the other guy, though. If there were more Ultrosses, it'd probably be a lot better. It's still probably pretty decent. Like, I'm not saying the card's bad at all. Like, I'll definitely play around with it. Um, but yeah, it might end up being a little bit too awkward. Uh, we shall see. Gal, just pack filler. Gis, uh, it's confirmed that you cannot revive him if he dies. So, that's uh, probably how it should have been. That's how I expected it to be. Uh, it's still okay, honestly. The card is not bad. Um, it's really funny. Uh, not, it's probably not going to work out. It's probably not going to be worth playing. But if you have, like, a Cactuar, you can use it as, like, a, fa a phase effect for Gis to basically make him, you know, hard to kill. It's just, like, every time you try to kill him, but, oh, I'm going to pick him and bring him out back in again. I don't know. That's kind of funny. But, yeah. Actually, all right card, honestly. Being able to revive if it doesn't get one shot is pretty good. Uh, but then, you know, that's just like a basic, a built-in Mindu effect. Uh, the entry is decent uh, on entry, much better than on attack like Beatrix. Uh, but yeah, eh, it could be okay. Go to go. Uh, just the this vanilla 7k. So again, I mean, the, there aren't en enough action abilities that are good enough that you want to get them with this. And the fact that he starts to pay for the action ability as well. Um, there's not really anything going to be high early enough to make this worth playing. White Mage. This is Water's version. It's about as straightforward as it gets, but that's good. Like I talked about before, the, getting the card back means they're best of all the locus. So, good card. The Cecil. Actually, really cool card. Um, very interesting with uh, the Eblins. They are Category 4, for the record. So, they can make his effect live really easily. And his other effect works really well with Minwoo, is the main thing there. Lasso is another one. Um, so, basically, that does work the way you want it to with those kind of effects, and it's just a pretty cool kind of combat combat trick sort of damage modulation thing anyway, so I like this card quite a bit. Um, that, and we got Rosa as an EX Searcher for it too, so yeah, it could, could be interesting. King of Cohordia, super weird effect. Um, clearly, you are trying to get some use out of the bounce, otherwise it's just not worth it all. Like, obviously the buff is not worth losing your forward presence, unless, for whatever reason, that forward you're bouncing is going to do something really good when it comes back. Uh, the fact that it's end of turn there means you can't combo it that turn, so that probably won't be worth playing. I can't really see anything to do with it at the moment. Banon, the new Mog 6, basically. Uh, but that's... I mean, the protection is pretty cool. Uh, this card's, again, hard to evaluate because it's a matter of how often it'll be protected and how much your opponent is going to risk uh, hitting it, whether you have a back... Like, you know, are they going to want to spend resources targeting it on the chance that it's a backup? But then if they are going to do that... What if it's not a backup and you know you just waste your time with this 4K? Really weird. Um, and, but yeah, the, being able to add a forward a card every turn potentially, otherwise protected, is like pretty cool too. Uh, so I actually like this card quite a bit, and the fact that it does double up with Mog as a card to protect Mog as well. Um, interesting, very interesting. Paladin. This is a Randy. Like two cost backup effectively for getting standing units back gets back backups too, which is maybe funny. I don't know, but eh. Famfrit, big Famfrit. I hope, please hope, come on, everyone, please call this big Famfrit so I don't get confused when people talk about Famfrit. Um, interesting. Uh, it costs five years of the unit, obviously, but uh, uh, it's hard, hard to evaluate. Um, <laughs> it'll depend on the situations that come up in the uh, the game. Uh, once Opus 9 comes out. Obviously, great deterrent to if your opponent has, you know, multiple forwards when you have none. So it really kind of stops your opponent uh, over developing. But they'll already be, you know, already the game is tending towards having cheap stuff down to protect against Veritas and other Fanfrits as well. So this Fanfrit kind of gets countered or blocked by all that stuff as well. Maybe too expensive in that case. Kutru Lane. Uh, very interesting, actually. Very probably pretty good. Like, you know, anytime you wanted Halicarnassus, this is basically just a not bad version of Halicarnassus, because I actually think Halicarnassus herself sucks. Um, at being the only thing in the game that does that makes her have a use, but if I want to negate something's abilities, I'd much rather be using this Kuchel Lane, because it's instant speed, it's not, your opponent doesn't see it, and it's not a vanilla forward, basically. Uh, it's just, you know, one CP. But that's kind of cool. Uh, so I like this card quite a bit. Um, and it, you know, any, like I said, anytime you were going to play Halicarnassus, you probably just play this instead now. Porom. I've talked about what the heck. Like, I, I 
I don't know how much I've talked about it, but basically this card is really, really dumb. I don't know why it exists. There's, this card shouldn't exist. It shouldn't have a X. Definitely shouldn't have a X. Uh, just the stuff you do with this is so stupid. Um, being able to revive Val, you know, since why do we need to recur Valifors? Why is it EX? And it also has an EX, three cost EX searcher to go with it. Uh, why can you bring it back to Phoenix and then bring back Phoenix with Porom and do that infinitely? I, yeah, there's, I, I don't want, I want to get into it, but yeah, basically I think this card is, the game doesn't want this card to exist. Uh, this is water standard unit version. All right. For once, water gets a little bit shafted because this, like the fire one, doesn't give you CP, which means it's pretty bad. Uh, that effect would be cool, being able to do that a bunch, if it wasn't on a vanilla body that had to attack or block. Um, you know, for, uh, that's for all the, you know, the stuff that, like, looking top card deck, all that, you know, Ultimisha. It's good with Ultimisha, I guess, but yeah. yeah. Mog 6, super interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, if, you're, if there's a way to reliably uh, have zero cards in hand when it dies, it's actually really, really crazy value, obviously. You know, enter, draw two. If you can get rid of the drawback when it leaves, that's good. But of course, going to zero, probably not uh, often going to be worth. Maybe going to one is okay. Uh, anyway, um, Dark Requiem, so much text there. Pretty cool, actually. Like, it's actually a really interesting uh, special ability. Um, but uh, that's not what the card's about. The card's going to be about can you get rid of the drawback? Um, and will it be worth doing that? Marlboro. This is literally the other Marlboro, but you don't have to pay to make it a forward, but you can only do it in your turn, which is better, but still not good. Uh, three cost, though. Good Fisher. It's maximum value for Fisher on color. That's cool, but other than that, yeah, whatever. Lhasa, as has been talked about, this is like Asura. Negate damage in this game means remove damage or heal damage. So it's like a kind of like a two cost Minwoo, sort of, um, that you don't have to. Well, you, I mean, it's just like, uh, the, what's like a flintlock, I guess. I don't know. The fact that it's a two cost Lhasa though makes you Drace cost one, yeah, like a Drace or you know, searchable with Vein EX, but yeah. Rosa, I think this card is decent because it's a uh, neutral forward and water doesn't have many good neutral forwards that aren't mono specific. Actually, even the mono specific ones aren't really neutral, uh, but it's you know, three cost 7k, but 1k less means it's not doesn't have the same drawbacks other 7ks have, so it's actually semi annoying to kill and the. For our party attacking effect is, you know, it's never going to give you more attacks in a turn, but it is going to make your party your forwards, you know, be a lot bigger, a lot harder to block by being a constant party member with them. And Mime, it's really good with Mime, obviously, so you can have two Mimes and get, you know, both attacks in with them, uh, with the buffs, uh, with the draw card, sorry. And the special is good. Like, honestly, you know, Mono Water, you can, you can make that resolve easily. Mono Water's a good deck. So you can basically have a, a Fairy without playing Fairy, pretty much. So actually, I actually think this card's pretty good. I think it's probably better than some people give it credit for. Wall. I mean, what? I don't know, man. I don't know how this exists in Opus 9. This is like an Opus 3 card, probably. Uh, the restriction seems ridiculous. Like, that's so specific for just a 9k that does 9k when it dies. It's like... It, whatever. Lock. <laughs> wrong name. Um, and that's the reason this card's not good. Because, you know... It's a deck that you need a bunch of Category 6 characters for the, for this to be good in a deck, but what's the point of having a, a, category, a deck with a bunch of Category 6 characters if you can't make them discard with lock? Because that's the only reason you want to play a bunch of Category 6 characters. So that's about all I can say about that. Chaos Mobius. Again, really weird, uh, like, interesting combination of effects there. Uh, you know, killing a monster is where you get the high roll. Other than that, though, probably the fact that you can't recur it with something like uh, Renoa or... Um, uh, yeah, Renoa, basically, and doesn't go in the same elements as Avatar or Fina. It's just, I don't know, weird, probably not worth playing. This card's super interesting. You can play like a Camelot engine with this, you know, just play a bunch of these, a bunch of cams, and then, you know, break your opponent's guy, bring in a camp, search another one, break your opponent's guy again, bring in another camp. This is actually pretty funny. Like, and I have... I have, like, EX decks that have Cam as the main forward, and that this could fit really well in those, but, yeah. Very interesting. It's Category 6. Make your lock, uh, you know, lock rules resolve more, but no, we've got plenty of those now, anyway. Yeah, really, really interesting. I think that's everything. All right, yeah, cool. Cheers. Um, so, this is literal all the first impressions. Like, I was at work when the whole set got revealed, so I didn't even have time to go through and think about everything a lot. Um, but, yeah, thanks for watching. Sorry it was kind of long in the end, but, yeah, cheers.